Good morning. I missed being with you guys. I'll wait till some more people come in. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It is 5 a.m., 5.10 actually. Good morning, bless the Lord this morning. Bless the Lord this morning. Good morning, Sister Yvette. Good morning. Good morning, wonderful people at 512 this morning. I am still, um, I'm wrapping up my uh, fast and consecration, just still trying to be a little still. Uh, but I really did not want to miss another week of this because this word about holler if you hear me has been in my belly uh, for a couple of weeks. So, good morning. Back at you, woman of God, Sister Evangelist. Amen. Amen. We are going to get started here in about two minutes. So, go get your coffee and whatever else you might want to do before we get started. I think this is a word that uh, will bless you. It will bless you whether you hear it now or you are one of those who will hear it later. Um, I bless God for your dedication to be a part of the fourth watch prayer hour at 5 a.m. on Tuesdays. And uh, short of sickness, I might even come on with a little cough on occasion, sickness, death, or a fast that God has called me to off of social media, uh, my plan is to be here with you all um, in the morning. Amen. Amen. I don't, Yvette, do you want to come in on camera? I don't know. You might not. You let me know because I'll bring you in. I'll bring you in if you want. Amen. All right. Well, we bless the Lord this morning. Thank you all again so much for being with us. Let's get into this word. Daddy, we love you. We adore you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for who you are before the foundations of the world. You were. You were God. You were already sitting high and looking low. You called everything into this earth into existence. And so, God, we thank you for that. We thank you that we serve a true and living God that we can call Father God, that we can call Daddy God. And so we thank you for that this morning. Let the rivers of our worship flow to you. We worship you. We put worth and value on you, not on our possessions, not on our gifts, not on our talents. We put no worth in ourselves. We know that we are who we are because you are who you are and you never change God. You never change daddy. And we thank you for that. We thank you for that. Thank you for every opportunity. Thank you for every sign. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for the favor of the Lord being upon our lives, God. We ask for favor now in the time of favor. Turn to us. Hear our cry. Hear our voice, O oh God, and answer our prayer, O oh God. We come this morning with a holler in our spirit. Hallelujah. Help, Lord Jesus. And we thank you that even in our cry for help, we can smile through it. We can worship through it. We can cry through it knowing that our answer is going to come from you because we look to the heel from which, come, from which comes our help. And we know that our help comes from you. And so we love you today and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So welcome, welcome to Fourth Watch Power Prayer and Teaching uh, with me, uh, Dr. Tuesday Tate, Minister, um, Elder, bless the Lord. We thank him this morning. Um, 
where I serve at the Streams Church, where Pastor A. Thomas Hill, good morning, Sister Q, is my pastor. Amen. And so I thank God that God has given me a vision for my own ministry that I've walked in for probably almost 20 years now. And uh, for such a time as this, he has released me to go forth and, and do some things. And so some of you know, uh, before we get into the word and a couple of few more people are coming on, we have a men's conference coming up on April the 7th where uh, Bishop uh, Marvin L. Sapp will be our keynote. Now, that uh, conference is men only. There will Women will be allowed at 2 p.m. for a private um, separate session. And at the end of that conference, we're going to do something called the um, Reconciliation Restoration Ceremony, where we will bring women into the sanctuary where men who have agreed to be a part of this will stand proxy uh, for men who have done man hurt, whether it was left you in divorce, whether it was domestic violence, whether it was abuse, whether it was left you with your three kids, his kids, and went and started another family on the other side of town. Whatever that hurt is, you know, knew your father, didn't know your father, uh, was molested, was touched, whatever that issue is, uh, these men will stand proxy and um, apologize for the hurt uh, that you received. And that and, and ask for forgiveness. And so uh, we are going to be prayed up, uh, the intercessors the uh, who will be praying over those women and equipping those women to come into that space with those men. By the end of the day, the men will be full, filled and full and they will be powerfully anointed to go forth and do what God has called them to do. So tell your sons, tell your husbands, your uncles, your grandfather. It's for senior men, adult men certainly, um, also, for the millennials and teen boys, uh, when we talk about that, I'm looking more at 7th, 8th, and on up grade. Okay, so please, please get them there. They can register via Eventbrite for the Father Form Men's Conference. The Father Form Men's Conference. Uh, workshops, your lunch is included, your continental breakfast. Uh, so it's going to be a powerful, powerful day on April the 7th here in Indianapolis. You do not have to go all the way to Dallas or Florida, uh, Atlanta, wherever Bishop Jakes decides to have uh, manpower to receive manpower. Amen. And if God told me I called a man uh, to start a movement and a revolution for women, and that was called Woman Dar Loose, and I can use a woman to do the same uh, for men. And so I absolutely believe that when our men are filled and full and are uh, processing through their hurt, whether they know they have it or not, and they are moving towards the hope and the glory of what God created them to be, our marriages will be healthy, our families, our children, our communities, our churches. And so we are going to just have a powerful time. Men, you are going to have a powerful time because no women are allowed in the sanctuary or the workshops with you. So we are there to serve and to help um, move the vision that God has given for uh, the Father Form Men's Conference on April 7th at West Side Missionary Baptist Church where Pastor Michael Bryant is the pastor. So register for that. I'll put the link here. You can go through Eventbrite. It's going to be a powerful time. Luke chapter 18. Thank you. Thank you for that. Allowing me to do that little commercial. Luke chapter 18. Holla if you hear me. Somebody holla on. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Edwards. Uh, good morning. Yes, holla if you hear me. Make sure we're doing some thumbs up, some hearts. If God is speaking something to you as it's shared via this uh, message this morning, just come into agreement with me with some hearts, some thumbs up, some you know text mess, uh, some posts here. Go ahead and share, tag somebody, invite them to be a part. Holla if you hear me. How many of us got a holler in our belly? Hallelujah. We need something from God. We want God's attention and we need to holler. Help, Lord. See me. Hey, hey, God, see me. Well, the beauty of this relationship that we have with Jesus Christ, we really don't have to holler. And we really don't have to ask, do you see me? Because he does see you. He sees exactly where you are 
where you are in your situation, where you are geographically, where you are spiritually, where you are emotionally, where you are emo emi uh, mentally, psychologically. He sees where you are. He already knows. But sometimes we need to open our mouths and say, God, I need you. I need you. Now, the beauty of this text that we are about to walk through is that, I'm sorry, y'all, this hair is getting on my nerves. Okay, because it's all in my face. So, the beauty of this text that we are about to walk through is that Jesus asks a question that I'm wondering if most of us are ready to answer. Are you ready to answer this question that Jesus asked? Good morning, Brother Allen. That Jesus asked... Are you ready to answer this question? Starting in verse 35, Luke chapter 18. As Jesus approached Jericho, we know what Jericho was. It was the wall that had to come down. It was the place of, of obstacles, the place of blockers, the place of um, where you had to stand for what you believed and then be obedient to what God told you to do. All of us have that in our lives. There's something that God is telling you to stand on and wait on him and be obedient to do and move when he tells you to do and move. What has God told you to do? What has God told you to be still until I tell you to open your mouth? It is not by coincidence that the beggar is at the place of Jericho where he was silent until it was time for him to speak. Just like at the walls of Jericho that they walked around seven times and then when it was time for them to speak, when it was time for them to blow the horn, they did it and that thing in their lives came down. What is it that God has told you to be still on, to shut your mouth, to go sit down, pray until I tell you to act. Pray until I tell you to move. Pray until I tell you to do, to go, to say. Place of Jericho. A blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd coming by, he heard the crowd coming by. He asked them, what's going on? What happened? What's going on? Now, um, I, I want to read from uh, the Message Bible because it really... Uh, said something to me that blessed my soul uh, as I was just preparing for this this morning. So he asked them, um, you know, what's going on? And uh, the Bible says that uh, he called out. They said they told him uh, he, they told him Jesus of Nazareth is coming. Jesus of Nazareth is coming. This is about verse 37. Uh, they said he's he's he's. One translation said he's coming, but the Message Bible says he's going by. So he's going, but he's going by. So he's coming, but he's also going. You ever feel like you're between... <laughs> You're something's coming, but you also know something leaving. Good God Almighty. Something leaving your life, but you also know that something's coming. You ever been in that place? That's a good place to be in. To know that where God has you, you're transitioning. You're transitioning from where you are to where God is taking you. That's, a, that's good news this morning. That's a blessing this morning. Uh, our church just came out of a fast. I'm, as I said, I'm continuing a little longer to just be in that place of stillness. And to know that there's some things that you know God has done. So you're going through it. You're passing through it. But you don't quite feel like that, right? You don't quite feel like it's done yet. But you know you're on your way somewhere. In this case, in this case, they said God is coming, but he's also passing by. So you better grab the hem of his garment and get what you need. Amen. Amen. Give me one second, guys. I need to fix something. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So he, they said, they went on to say, he yelled when he heard them say, wait a minute, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And he's, he's going by. Oh, wait a minute. They said he yelled. The man said, Hey, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It's interesting that all of the translations recognize that the man called him son of David. 
son of David, son of the king. So this beggar was recognizing Jesus as the king. He wasn't recognizing him as Christ. He wasn't recognizing him as the son of God. He wasn't recognizing him as the healer. He knows that, wait a minute now, this is the son of David. This is, this is the one that is in the lineage of David. He is the king. He is the king of the Jews. Now, I didn't heard all about what Jesus can do. But he's coming my way. The king of the Jews, he's recognizing Christ's authority as king and as Lord. And so he cries out to him and he says, son of David, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Now, this was interesting to me because the message Bible says it this way. He cried out, son of David, mercy. Son of David, mercy, have mercy on me. Now, the mercy seat is located where? In glory. Uh -huh. The mercy seat is located in heaven. The mercy seat is what God has authority over. This is what I saw when I read this scripture. I literally read the beggar was, wait a minute, let me connect with heaven and earth. Let me connect with God in heaven and connect with this, this king who is the son of David in the earth. God, have mercy. But I'm talking to Jesus. God, mercy. Have mercy. God, let mercy right here standing in front of me have mercy. Mercy. Mercy and grace are, are different. Um, uh, let's, let's explain it this way. Grace is mercy. Let's start here. Mercy is withholding from you what you deserve. For the wages of sin is death. Withholding from you what you do deserve. We deserve death when we sin. Withholding from us what we do deserve. We, we fornicated. We had sex unprotected. We, we fornicated and had sex outside of marriage. We should have had diseases. Should have got pregnant. Should have AIDS. We drove drunk. We should have got car accidents. Uh, we, we stole. We should have been in jail. All these things, we committed adultery, your wife didn't find out, your husband didn't find out, you, you got past it and you kept going on in your marriage and you recovered, come on. So the wages of sin is death. There's something that dies, but the gift is grace. Gift is God giving us what, giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is God withholding from us what we do deserve, but grace is giving us what, giving us what we don't deserve. So the man cries out and he says, son of David, mercy, have mercy. God, God, have mercy upon me. I know I don't deserve to be healed. I'm a beggar. For whatever cause, he he was blind. We don't know why he was blind. Maybe there was a sin. I don't know. But there's a reason he's asking God to have mercy. Give me what I don't deserve. Some of you, one of the reasons you will not ask God for what you need, what you desire, and what you want in your life is because you are, you are bound up in guilt. You are bound up in shame. You are bound up in condemnation. And this morning, God wants you to know that the God of mercy, who is mercy, is here to forgive you. If you have conviction in your heart, the Bible says that if your heart does not condemn you, meaning that you have conviction, you, you, you are saying, Lord, please forgive me. You have said, Lord, please forgive me. Maybe you do have the can't help it. I don't know. But what I do know is that you serve a God who is merciful and his mercies are new every morning. So ask for it. God, have mercy. Mercy, have mercy and grant me grace. Grant me the grace in my life that I need to get done and accomplish what I desire to accomplish. We don't deserve half the, we don't just, we didn't deserve to wake up this morning. Let's be clear. But he still chose to call your name. He still chose to call your name this morning. He still chose to say, Yvette, wake up. He still chose to say, uh, Sister Lane, wake up. He still chose to say, Alan, wake up. He still chose to say, Michelle, wake up. Tracy, wake up. Cooper, wake up. Tuesday, wake up. He didn't have to.
to do that. That was him withholding death from us and granting us life, mercy, and grace. So the beggar calls out, mercy, mercy, hey, mercy, hey, glory, have mercy, have mercy. See me right here. I need you right here. See me. Hey, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. So the Bible goes on to say that when they, when, uh, they, the man, the people who told him that it was Jesus coming, the people who told him that it was Jesus coming, don't, don't tell me that Jesus is here. And they, they, then they told him to shut up. They was like, shut up. Be quiet. You making too much noise. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, I used to be like that. I, I've had to learn how to shut my mouth, right? Amen. But when people would be like really loud and rambunctious, I'm like, calm all that down. Why are you doing all that? But you don't know what them people going through. I had to get to that place to realize we don't know what they went through this week. We don't even know what they went through to get to church that day. Glory to God. We don't know what they went through. We don't know what their life struggle has encompassed. We don't know what they're waiting on God to do. We don't know if they're going home to an abusive spouse or kids that's, that's just totally out of order and disobedient and maybe on drugs and stealing stuff out their house. And We don't know what they're going through. We don't know if they got a call on Friday that said they found somebody found a lump in their breast or a man got to go back for a prostate exam. We don't know. We don't know why. Well, most of the time that's women crying out like that. Amen. But we don't know what they're going through. Sometimes it is emotionalism. Uh, I'm very clear about that because there are seasons that God has allowed me to operate in deliverance. But, uh, but. To learn and to know the difference. And when you don't know the difference, you might want to just be quiet. You might want to get your yell on. You might want to holler if you hear me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so he starts yelling out. Hey, hey, Jesus, mercy, mercy, have mercy. God, have mercy. God, let Jesus have mercy upon me. Good God Almighty, let Jesus direct his eyes towards me. Let Jesus hear me this morning. Somebody needs Jesus to hear them this morning. You got a tax issue. You got a healing issue. You got a relationship issue. You got a job issue. You got a housing issue. Glory to God. And you need Jesus to see you. You need Jesus to hear you. And so the only way he's going to hear you is if you open your mouth and say, Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, help Lord God. That's the only way he's going to hear you. He can't hear you when you woosa woosa meditating. Hmm. Yeah, we know he understands the groans and utterances that come out your mouth. But sometimes you got to open that mouth and tell God what you need. He already knows, but he wants to hear your voice. Some of you have been shut down by the cares of the world and the cares of your life. And you're like, God ain't hearing me. I'll never forget. Uh, I've heard this actually many times, but one time it's coming back to me. When a young person told me, God don't hear my prayers. Well, why do you say that, baby? Because nothing's happening. Because no one's taught them of times and seasons. There's seed, time, and harvest. There, there are three different things. You got to plant the seed of the word of prayer by faith. Then you got to wait on the time of, I always say this wrong, the mas masturation, masturation. I always say that word wrong. And then you wait to see the harvest. No one had taught her that. And the truth is we as adults act like nobody taught us that. You don't plant a seed today and it comes up tomorrow. You gotta, you gotta keep watering it. You gotta make sure it has the right amount of water, the right amount, the right amount of, 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 of Holy Spirit, right? You gotta make sure that it has the right, the right amount of sun, Jesus, the Word of God, and then it is God who will bring the increase. You gotta have the Holy Spirit. You gotta have the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and you gotta have the harvest, which comes from God. And so He cries out. He cries out in Luke chapter eighteen. Starting in verse 35, he cries out and they tell him to shut up. Listen, don't tell me that Jesus is coming and then tell me to shut up. Don't tell me the one that has my answer and then tell me to be quiet. Don't tell me that you're here to help me and then when I ask for help, you don't want to help me. 
Don't tell me that you believe in my cause and in the call on my life and the ministry on my life. And then when it's an opportunity to connect me with a blessing, you don't want to do that because you want something in order to get something from me. Don't, don't, don't tell me, uh, you need to be quiet. You need to quit talking about Jesus. Well, you didn't introduce me to Jesus and now I didn't got saved. And all I want to do is talk about Jesus. But now you're telling me I talk about Jesus too much. Now you see what Jesus is doing in my life. He's touched me. He's changed my life. And now I'm at church every Sunday. I'm trying to be a Bible study every Sunday. I'm bringing my tithes and my offering into the storehouse. I'm trying to serve every Wednesday Bible study, whenever your Bible study is. And now you're telling me I'm doing too much. You didn't pray for your husband to get saved. You didn't pray for him to start, start walking with the Lord. You've prayed for him to, to come into a place of his authority and understanding of who he is as the head and the least uh, priest and the king. Because you know if he understands he's a king, he's going to start treating you like a queen. And this is what you ask for. And then when he finally gets a revelation, you're like, you always trying to tell me what to do. You ain't my daddy. <laughs> Jesus. But for all them years, you was acting like his mama because he didn't know no better. You prayed that he gets the infilling and the empowering of the Holy Spirit and he gets it. But now because you don't have it, or maybe you didn't pray that, but God knew that's what he needed. God knew that's what he needed. And so God did it, but because you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet, you a little jealous. Listen. I'm about to help some women who's single and some of y'all that's married. You pray for your husband to be in the place where God has called him to be as a man. Now you also need to pray that when he gets there, God makes you ready because all those years you were leading the family. You were saying the order. You were calling the fast. You were saying when it was time to pray. You were saying, let's read the Bible. You were saying, baby, get up. It's time to go to church. You were waking him up on Sunday morning like you waking up the kids. But Jesus. But now you pray. You pray. And God has heard your prayers. Whether it was at year three, year 10, year 20, year 50, God has heard your prayers. Now he's walking in who he is. And you don't know how to handle it. Because you didn't ask God to prepare you for that blessing. I don't care what it is you're asking God for. You want a husband and you're asking God to send this type of man. You're asking for God for a wife to send this type of woman. You need to have the capacity to deal with the woman that God wants to bless you with. To deal and receive the, the man that God wants to bless you with. You want that kind of job, making that kind of money? You need to ask God to give you the grace and the anointing. God, mercy, have mercy. Send your grace. Anoint me for that. Because you can get the job and lose it. You can get the house that you dreamed of and lose it because you don't have the capacity to hold it together and to keep it. He'll give you the mate that you want, but you're not ready. You, you're not ready. You don't have a prayer life. You, you're asking for a godly woman, but you ain't even got a prayer life. You skim through the Bible. You ain't got, you supposed to feed her, wash her with the word. You ain't got no word. Jesus wept, really? When was the last time you called a fast and put yourself on a fast? Where is your discipline? But you're asked, God, send me a godly woman, a woman that'll pray, a woman I can go to church with. You get her and now she waking you up to go to church. You want a man who's financially secure, but, and I'm not even talking about you having debt because it ain't about you having debt. We all got some, probably some level of debt. I believe in God and we declaimed it day one. Supernatural debt cancellation. Anybody still in agreement with me? Wave, holler if you hear me. That's how we're going to holler this morning. We're going to do our thumbs up in our hearts. We're going to holler. Hallelujah. If you hear what I'm saying, tag, share, invite someone to be a part of this message because I know what the Lord is saying is real good. So, you need to ask God to prepare you for the blessing that's about to come. You want favor. Our pastor's talking about favor in the time of favor. And y'all, I'm telling y'all, I saw God do something with favor just last week. And, and it blew my mind. But I, I'm ready for that favor. <laughs> I've been asking God for that favor. So 
whatever you need to do to put into position. So you need to be ready when the favor comes. Thank you so much for them thumbs up and them hearts. Yeah, that's how we hollering this morning. That's how we say we agree with God. And so he goes on to say, the Bible goes on to say, they tell him to be quiet. And so he gets louder. <laughs> oh, did you tell me to shut up? Oh, Jesus. Hey, good God. Glory to God. God, hey, thank you, Lord. Merciful God. Loving God. Gracious God. All-knowing God. All-powerful God. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You came in the name of our God, Jehovah. You just got louder and you got louder. Hallelujah. And they probably got madder and madder. I did a post several months ago, several weeks ago about the children. And in that post, I said, men, get in place. And someone said, why you got to yell? Some man asked me, why you got to yell? Because that's how it came up out my belly. What do you mean why I got to yell? Somebody need to yell. Somebody need to be John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness. And that yelling caused me the birth of men's conference good god almighty to help men come on somebody not because i have the answer but so that men can come alongside of men and help men come to the truth and knowledge of who they are in christ and once they know they can yell we know most of the yelling going on in church is women i need to hear some men yelling because i keep telling brothers honey when a man worships god that's sexy that's fine good god almighty whoa that's fine the first journaler person to journal was a man Moses to worship God were all men it was men it wasn't women falling prostrate and the, the glory of God the water of God entering into the temple and coming up to their ankles and their knees and their and their waist that was men that wasn't us I absolutely know that when men get in position when men Walk in the glory of God, in the hope of glory, which is Jesus Christ. When Jesus is the center of their lives and they love him, I absolutely know that marriages will get right. Men will find the, the helpmate and the wife that God has called for them. They will find a woman that they want to come alongside and help go to the next level. And they go to the next level together. I absolutely know that our communities will get whole. Our churches will grow. I, listen, I ain't intimidated by no man getting in position in the church. I know who I am. But there is a place for them that God has called them to. Ain't nobody tripping on that. Ain't nobody threatened by that. Marriages will get healthy. Our children will get healthy. Our children will be whole. I absolutely believe that what we see in the streets will turn around when men get in place. When men get in place. I believe that. And so here is this man yelling out in Luke chapter 18 saying, Jesus, Jesus, have mercy. Son of David, Jesus, have mercy. King, have mercy. This is why in this same passage, Earlier on at the begin at the top of the passage, the Bible talks about the widow who went to the uh, unjust judge and asked for him to give her her blessing. And, and she wearied him, the Bible says. We're going to walk through that, too. You got to know how to keep asking until you get an answer. So the man says, Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus heard him. Jesus stopped. Verse 40. Jesus stopped. Jesus stopped. Can you imagine? Jesus stopped. C can you imagine? Jesus is in heaven right now. The Bible says he's doing two things for you. He's interceding for you. And he's being your advocate. When the accuser of the brethren, which is the devil, comes and accuses you before God. The Bible says he stops when he hears the cry from the heart of someone who has faith, who knows that when I cry out to Jesus, Jesus is going to answer. He's going to hear me. I know that my answer is found in this man. The Bible says Jesus stopped. Stopped dead in his tracks. 
Bible says he heard him. And he ordered. He ordered someone to bring that man to him. Good God Almighty. Because he was blind. He, he, he might have heard Jesus, but he didn't know how to maneuver around that crowd. Some of you won't, won't, because it's too many, everybody else, everybody, listen, you got everybody else praying about your situation, but you not praying about your situation. You got everybody else. I, I, with this men's conference, I, men's conference, I've asked several women uh, to come into agreement with me as intercessors leading up to the conference and the week of and the day of. But I'm praying too. <laughs> How I look asking them to pray and they not praying. I'm not praying. When they come to me with, I heard the Lord say X, Y, and Z. The reason I can agree with them when they come and say it is because I'm praying. If not, or I can say, mm, I don't know. Let me let me go back and talk to God about that because I'm not I'm not sure if I, I'm hearing that. But Amen. Thank you for sharing. I'm gonna take that back to God. But if I'm not praying, I'll take anything that anybody says. That's some of y'all problem this morning, this morning. You not praying, but somebody with some kind of prophetic gift. And I'm going to say it like that because I know who I am. I know the position and as we call them in the church office that God has put me in as a prophet. I say it all the time. It took me years to be able to say that. But I know where I'm at now and I'm in my lane and I'm rolling. Some of you are getting words from people that you have not went back and judged it against the word and took it back to Jesus and say, now, Lord, this is what they said. But I'm not sure. Is this really is this what you're saying? Some things are going to immediately quicken in your spirit and you'll know and you'll get the answer and you'll start walking in that thing or walking towards that thing. But some things, some of you went, but you weren't sent. You went because man told you to go and do it, but you weren't sent by God. And that's why you're not seeing the fruit of it yet. Just stop. Stop. And turn around. And say, Lord, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me let, let, let me have a talk with you about this thing. So the Bible says, the Bible says that Jesus stopped right where he was. He ordered them, bring that man to me. Bring that man to me. Bring him to me. He said, and so they brought the man to him. And when he drew near, when he got close, he wasn't just right up on Jesus. When he got close to him, ha, ha, ha. This is the question I opened up with this morning. And I said, there's a question that Jesus is going to ask you. He's going to send someone to ask you this question. What do you need? That's what the scripture says. Jesus stopped. And he asked the man. What do you want me to do for you? How can I help you? <laughs> what you want? What you want? If Jesus asked you that question right now, if that dropped in your spirit, you in prayer, you're in meditation, you right here with me. I pray that while we're teaching, you're praying, you're seeking God. You're saying, Lord, speak to my heart. You should never come into fourth watch and not ask God to speak to your heart and not to reveal revelation to you. You should always come into this moment. Asking God, Lord, give the woman of God a word for me and then help me to obey it. Show me how to apply it. That's how we need to move in fourth watch prayer. You're a watchman. That's exactly how you need to conduct your life. If you are bold enough, brave enough, sacrificial enough to wake up at five o'clock with me on Tuesdays and, and, and receive prayer, and teaching, oh yeah, you need to be asking God, what is in this word for me? It may not be all of it, but it may be that thing that I drop right there at that moment that you run with. And then Lord, teach me to obey it when I hear it. Let me know it when I hear it. Cause me to obey it when I hear it. And let me apply it when I, when, once I obey. Let me apply it when I hear it. And then make me to obey. What if God stopped you, right? What if he stopped right this morning? And in the middle of this teaching, as you're getting dressed for work, as you're headed in your car to work, as you're sitting at your desk or on the line or whatever it is that you do, while you're cooking breakfast or while you're cooking dinner and you hear in your spirit, you hear in your spirit, the Lord is going to say to you, 
What do you need? How can I help you? How may I help you? What it is that you want? What do you want me to do? And it may not be Jesus. He may send someone. He may send someone who will ask you that question. What are you going to say? Do you really know what you need? This man knew exactly what it is he wanted. I ministered a word at our church a few weeks ago. I want to say it was uh, the 17th of December. Pretty sure it was that day. The Sunday before Christmas. And, he, and the question was, the man of God said to the king, he told him, ask for the ridiculous. Ask God for the ridiculous. Some of you don't want to ask God for anything because there's guilt, there's shame, there's no, there's condemnation. There's, but God said there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. If you're in Christ, there's no guilt, there's no shame, there's no embarrassment. If you've repented and asked God for forgiveness, you can ask God for whatever you want and be extravagant in your request. This man, this beggar, this blind man, he was a beggar <clears throat> because he was blind. He didn't say, hear me, I need you to hear me. The Holy Spirit just told me to say this. He didn't say, I'm a beggar, I need some money. I'm broke, I need some money. I'm a beggar, I need a job. That's not what he needed. He needed his sight. Because his, him not having sight is what made him impoverished. You not having sight is why you are impoverished. You not having vision is why you don't have everything that God wants you to have. You not walking and living in purpose is why you do not have what God has for you to have. Ask God for sight. Ask God for purpose. Ask God for vision. Ask, listen, you might need to ask God, what is it that I really do need? What is it that I really do want? You think it's a husband so it can help you take care of them kids or take care of those bills. No, no, that might not be it. Because Jesus is, the Bible says, our husband man. That's why he can be a husband man to a man. He can be the one who, who partners with him in close, intimate relationship, not just a woman. You think it's money that you need. What you need is a strategy because you get the money and you'll mess it up because you don't have a strategy. You don't have a plan. I want sight, but what do you want sight for? What do you need sight for? Money wasn't what he needs. I need y'all to hear me. He was a beggar. He could have asked Jesus, I need a, a check in the mail, as we would say today. I need to win the lottery. I need to hit big. No, what you need is a vision, a strategy, a plan, an idea that you can put into operation. And God brings the provision and he brings the connections. That will give you something that becomes the fish that will allow you to eat for the rest of your life. You got a song in your belly. You got a book in your belly. You got something in you. That one song that you write and that you sing or you write for someone can put you in a place that will take care of you the rest of your life. What do you need? God, I need an invention. I need an idea. I need vision. I need to be clear about my purpose. He asked for what he wanted. And the Bible says, the Bible says that this man didn't ask for money because he was beggar. He didn't ask for a meal because he was hungry. He didn't ask for temporary provision. He asked for the long lasting answer. He needed the thing that was going to heal him physically so that he could work a job. So that he could make money. So that he could stop being a beggar. You got to back up from uh, the circumstances of your life and get to the beginning of the matter. Do you hear what I'm saying? It wasn't about him being a beggar. 
He was a beggar because he was blind. So let's get to the root of this thing. You got to back up into the root of this thing. Why? You know, I, I'm just going to be transparent. When I started asking God in my 20s, I started asking God in my 20s, why do I do what I do? It's not that I had been with a ton of men. That ain't it because I'm just keeping it real. But what is it that I need from men that I allow these types of relationships to come into my life. And the Lord showed me what it was I had to back up into that thing. Then when I got that answer, I realized there was a certain type of man that was being attracted to me. And I was letting them, I was letting them in. God, what is that about? That was in my 40s. This is why the journey for me of waiting on my husband and the journey of abstinence started at 30. I'm 50. Because I had to back up into this thing because I wasn't no longer backing it up. Glory to God. Yeah, I said it. And so uh, I had to back up into it to say, Lord, why do I do what I do? God showed me. It was this, it was this issue that I had in my relationship with my father. My earthly father. Why, why don't I believe you, God, when you tell me what you tell me? Because I didn't have a relationship with my father, my earthly father, that could be trusted. So it was hard for me to believe my heavenly father. I'm helping somebody. I know that I am. I know the Holy Spirit is helping you. When I got to this place and started saying, okay, God, I think I'm ready for marriage. And, and many opportunities started presenting themselves. And I would let those opportunities uh, in. But it was, a, it was a man that carried a particular trait in every last one of their characters. I had to stop and say, why do I allow that type of man into my life? And I'm going to tell you what the character was. They were all angry. Now, I don't believe that every black man is angry. I don't believe that every black woman is angry. But that was a character in what I saw a pattern in the types of men that were being attracted to me. The Lord showed me what that was about. So now I'm very clear. You can't, don't, I ain't got time for no man that's angry because I ain't angry. And I'm not trying to fix your anger. Go get a therapist like I had to do. <laughs> Go talk to Jesus like I had to do. You feel me? You got to back into the place. Get to it. Keep jotting it down. Okay, this is why. And then go to the next. But why is that? But why is that? But why is that? And God will allow you to get to the root. You can't break the pattern until you know the one to call out to for help. And then if you need help beyond him, go see somebody and talk to him. But this man cries out to Jesus in Luke chapter 18, and the Bible says in verse 40 that Jesus stops. Jesus stops. He commands the other people to bring that man to him. And he asks him the question, what do you need from me? Somebody's going to ask you, what do you need from me? How do you need, what do you need from me to advance your career in this job? How can I help you advance your career in this job? I speak that over my niece, Chanel. I speak that over my niece, Brittany. I speak that over my brother, Gardas. I speak that over my sister, Kika. I speak that over my sister, Jean. I speak that. Y'all need to start speaking that over your family. I speak that over my sister, Brenda. I speak that over my mother. I speak that over my future husband. I speak that over my life. I speak that over my pastor. A. Thomas Hill. I speak that over uh, our first lady, uh, Pastor Carol Hill. I speak that. Someone's going to come asking, how can I help you take this business? How can I help you take this ministry? How can I help you take your vision to the next level? Not because I need want something from you, but because I'm coming to help you. It's coming. Somebody's going to come and ask you. And when they do, all I want you to do is inbox me with the testimony. And what I'm challenging you today is have an answer. Have an answer. Somebody asked me how much you need to get out of debt. Well, there's one thing I need. I need to get out of debt, but there's a whole nother amount that I need to be free. Come on, somebody. I need this amount to get out of debt because them student loans, I hate them. I ain't one of them ones with a whole bunch of credit cards and stuff like that. May have some medical bills, but them student loans are of the devil. You ask me, I'm going to have that answer. But I'm going to also say, but this is what I need to be free. And I'm going to ask for the ridiculous. Because the person that God is going to send with the answer, 
they gonna come being able to with the capacity to meet the need. The person that is going to ask you is going to come with the capacity to meet the need. Whether it's in your job to help you go to the next level, they're going to mentor you, they're going to make the connection. Whether it's in your ministry, whether it's in whatever it is you are trying to do your business, they're going to come because they have the answer and the resources. They are not only willing to do it, they are able to do it. And because of that, they not only can they do it because they have the resources to do it, they're willing to, they're able to do it, and they're willing to do it, and therefore they will do it. They can, they're able, and they will. The Bible says that Jesus says one thing to him. The man didn't even, the man says, I, I just want to see. The man says, Master, I just want to see. Lord, I just want to see. He acknowledged that he is Lord. Because remember, son of David. So he acknowledged that he is Lord. He acknowledged his position of authority. Which means that was a humble. His cry was genuine. It was humble. It was out of respect. Because he knew who Jesus was. And he said, listen. I just want my sight. I, I, I really, I ain't got nothing else to ask of you. I want my sight. If he, if he wanted to, he could have probably said several other things. God ain't tripping on how long your list is. But you need to be clear about what you know, what you want, and what you need. He didn't even say what you need. He said what you want. What what you want? Wants change. <laughs> Wants are tied to emotions. Needs are tied to necessity. Desires are tied to the heart. Wants are tied to emotions, and they change. Needs are tied are, are are tied to the necessity to live, and desires are tied to the heart. He said what you want. How may I help you? You need to have your answer. You need to know what, you, what, what you're going to say when that question comes. And this was Jesus' answer. Receive your sight. <laughs> he had a long sermon. He had a long sermon. He had a whole other time of prayer. Well, let's pray. Let's come into agreement. Receive your sight, man. That's what he said. <laughs> he said, receive your sight. This is how the Message Bible says it. Jesus says, go ahead. Go ahead and see. Woo! Jesus said, go ahead and see. Seeing is already in you. Vision is already in you. Purpose is already in you. Destiny is already in you. Your healing is already in you. Go ahead. Go ahead and see. We ain't got to do nothing else. We ain't got to talk about nothing else. Just go ahead and walk in it. And the Bible says, he told him, just go ahead, see again, just go ahead. Which means at one time, he could see. And Jesus said, go ahead and see again, receive your sight again. Because your faith has healed you. Faith is in you. And your faith has healed you. I challenge you in your faith this morning. Rise up in your faith this morning. Take a stand in your faith this morning. Ask Jesus for the ridiculous. Be extravagant. The blessing in this text is that Jesus asked him in Luke chapter 18, starting in verse 35, how may I help you? What is it that you need? But the Bible says, ask and you'll receive. He said, if your heart doesn't condemn you, ask for whatever you want. He said, if you abide in me and my word, if, and my word abides in you, he said, ask for whatever you want. Ask. Ask, seek, and not. I mean, how many times he got to tell you to ask for what you want? And now I'm telling you, the Bible says you can be ridiculous in your ass. You can be, you can be extravagant in your ass. You can ask for stuff that other people are scared to ask for. Listen, man, if I told y'all some of the stuff I asked God for, let, let me just give you one. Um, I did my first women's conference after almost 20 years in ministry in 2016. I did my first women's conference. I came into that conference, I need you to hear me, planning that conference with a national speaker with $84 in the bank. My personal account, $84. I did not have my 501c3 yet. I said, Lord, I need this conference to be debt free before it closes out. I need to be able to pay every musician. I need to be able to sew into every uh, facilitator's life. One no big check, whether it was a little gift bag or whatever it was, but I need to be able to pay the speaker. 
At that time, we had one venue, and bless God, that Mich Allied Home Health Care, Michelle Mattingly, sold into what the vision that God had given me for that women's conference. I, I, I was grateful. But when I tell you that by the time we entered in to lunch on Saturday, it started on Friday. By the time we entered in to lunch on Saturday, that conference was debt-free. I'm entering into a men's conference on April the 7th where you women are allowed to come that Saturday at 2 p.m. to receive ministry. And I'm you got to register. So go to Eventbrite and you have to register too. Because I can only take about 50 women because I'm not sure, of course, how many men will be there. But I came into this planning. I said, now, Daddy, if you're going to have me do this, my budget is about $10,000. And I said, God, if you're going to have me do this, I need this conference to be debt free before I go into the conference so I can make sure that Bishop Sapp is paid, that the musicians are paid, that the venue is paid for, that the food is taken care of. I need every aspect taken care of. When I tell you that last week, I sent a proposal to several different people. My vision was that I would reach out to 10 churches and ask 10 churches to sponsor 10 men and several churches out the gate told me they couldn't do it. Okay. That's cool. I have relationships with these pastors, but that's fine. I, I love them. I love what they're doing. They're trying to do what they're trying to do. And as I searched across the city, I have not found one church that is having a men's conference in 2018. But nor did any of them that I know of had a men's conference last year. So I said, Lord, if you are calling me as a woman to do a men's conference, I need this conference paid for. I need it debt-free before I enter in. So any seed that is sown during that conference, any offering that is taken up, goes back into the ministry to plan for the women's conference next year. When I tell you I got an email last week that half of the conference is already paid for, you got to ask God for the ridiculous one call. One call. Now all I need is one more call. You got to get bold and be clear about what you need from God. Be specific. Our God is a specific God. He built the temple in a specific way. The curtains had to be a certain length and a certain width and a certain height. Had to be certain colors. It had to be set up a certain way. Our bodies are designed and built a certain way. To go for men to go with women and women to go with men. Our bodies are built a certain way. That's why women can carry children and men can't. But they carry life. Men carry life in their body with the seed that's planted in a woman that connects with the egg that a woman can carry for nine months and push through your body. Oh, God is a specific God. You got to be clear and specific about what you need, what you want, and what you desire. Amen. Ask for favor in the time of favor. But what you need that favor for? The Bible says that the glory of the Lord will show up on you. Thank you for your glory. But what do you need the glory of God to show up on you for? Who do you need to see that glory? So I bless God for you this morning. I pray that something I shared has been a blessing to you. I pray that as God continues to move me in, in this assignment to minister the word, please feel free to reach out to me if you have a women's conference, a singles conference, a marriage conference. If you just need someone to speak at your church on Sunday, on a women's day, I travel. My pastor has released me to go forth, forth in T-Tape Ministries and to move forth and forward in what God has for me. My desire is always to be in my home church on Sunday morning. But years ago, he says, sometimes you may not be able to do that. And if God has you somewhere ministering on a Sunday, you certainly can't do that. So thank God for the businesses that God has given me through Vision Focus uh, Group, where I train uh, administrators and teachers and business people and coaching. Thank God for ATK Speakers and Publishing Firm, where I'm actually doing a speakers training, a three-day speakers training this weekend, that you are invited uh, to still last minute registration. I can probably still take two people. And then in March, we have our writer's workshop. You don't have to be a part of ATK Publishing to be a part of the writer's workshop. You don't have to be a part of one of our projects. But so you can be a part of that speaker's, that writer's workshop on March the 3rd. 
If there's a book in you, let ATK Publishing, ATK, Advance the Kingdom Publishing, help you write your book and tell your story. You can be a part of one of our next two collaborations, The Mornings After or Intentional Increase, Maximizing Your Talent. I thank God for those businesses. I thank God for vision. I thank God for platforms where I get to speak and it's not preaching or teaching the word of God, but it's motivating people through the word of God without them knowing. I thank God for all of that. But what I love him for is the call of my life to minister his word. He didn't have to choose me. He didn't have to choose you. And so be specific. When the question comes to you, what is it that you need? How may I help you? Have an answer. And the Bible says he went away praising God. He went away glorifying God loudly. If you've got an answer this morning, glorify God. Put some hearts. Put some thumbs up. Glorify God. Give him praise. And holler if you've heard me this morning. Father, we thank you for your word and we declare that it is fallen upon good ground and it will bring forth fruit in its due season. 30, 40, 60, and to some a thousand fold. And we thank you, Daddy. Until we meet again next Tuesday, right here, Fourth Watch Prayer, Power Prayer Teaching at 5 a.m. God bless you, beloved. Have a beautiful Tuesday. This was me, Dr. Tuesday, Tuesdays with Tuesday, ministering God's word. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I hope to hear from you. Amen. Inbox me with your praise reports and uh, share with me what's going on in your life. If you inbox me <coughs> and you ask me to call you, let me say this, to pray. Sometimes I do. And sometimes I will just ask you what is your prayer need. And I will attach a um, an audio, audio prayer um, with your inbox message. So please do not think I'm sliding you. I just am not a person, honestly, I just don't do a lot of talking on the phone. And if the Lord calls me and releases me to call you, I will. But if you ask me to pray and you tell me what the prayer need is, I will pray with you and for you in agreement. But you got to be praying for yourself as well. Amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. You have a great and awesome Tuesday. God bless.